Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Rhiannon and today I'm filming the mid-year book freakout tag. Now, I don't normally film book tags, however, this one is a favourite of mine. I know I did it last year, I may have done it the year before as well, so I will make sure to have my previous videos linked down below for you guys. But the reason I love this tag in particular is because it sort of rounds up your reading for the first half of the year. Now, I am filming this pretty late, we are in July, but I do kind of like it that way because that means that I've had my six solid months of reading now and I can wrap up my thoughts on that first half of the month with you guys in this video. So to kick it off, I am going to mention my Goodreads goal. I have set this one to 52 books this year. I had a massive slump last year and I just fell out of love with reading for a little bit so I didn't want to come back into this year with a massive goal that was a little too daunting for me so I've set it for 52 books. So far I have managed to read 31 books which I'm definitely happy about. I would love to read more than those 52 books this year and if I stay at this pace I definitely will but I've definitely had a good mix of genres, formats and ratings throughout the first half of the year and I cannot wait to get on with this tag and share some of my thoughts on the books that I've been reading with you guys. So the first question is what's the best book you've read so far in 2023? Now this probably isn't going to come as a shock for a lot of you guys because that book is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. The hype had definitely gotten to me with this one. I was very scared that I wasn't going to enjoy it because as you all probably know, this book has been all over booktube, booktok and bookstagram and almost every single person that I've seen read this book has absolutely loved it. So I was definitely hesitant. However, I picked it up last month as I mentioned and I'm so glad I did because this just gave me everything that I wanted in a book. It was phenomenal. I had so many different emotions reading this. I got sucked into the story. I was so connected to the characters and it gave me the the feeling of reading a Sarah J Maas book for the first time and so yeah it was just a really amazing experience for me and I haven't stopped thinking about this one ever since I finished it. So in this book we follow our main character Violet and she has been training to become a scribe her whole life. However her mother is the tough as nails commanding general of the Dragon Riders Quadrant and she essentially enlists Violet in the Dragon Riders Quadrant instead of the Scribe Quadrant. Now Violet is not prepared for this at all. The Riders Quadrant is very dangerous. It is extremely high stakes as only a few dragons actually want to bond with humans per year and so the chances of you bonding with a dragon are lessened if there are more people competing against you. And so going into this without any experience is dangerous enough. However, because she's the daughter of the commanding general, she has an even bigger target on her back because years ago a rebellion started and the leaders of the rebellion were all killed. As further punishment, the children of these rebellion leaders were were all conscripted into the Dragon Riders Quadrant because there is a good percentage that they would die during the trials because as I mentioned this is such a dangerous place. So there are definitely a lot of people who would like to get revenge on General Soringale and so targeting Violet seems to be a pretty good option for them. We of course have different things at play, there is a war brewing in this book, we also have the kind of inner conflict between all of our candidates and so we do follow Violet as she is thrown into the this world and tries to navigate it as best as she can with the knowledge that she's obtained during her time as a scribe and also what she learns along the way. That's all I'm going to say about that one. I feel like I've rambled on about it enough but this is a phenomenal book. If you haven't already guessed I would highly recommend you pick it up and yeah this is definitely a favourite book of mine and I'm so glad that I finally decided to sit down and read it. And then I did also quickly want to mention a few other favourites of mine because I have only had four five star reads this year and I feel like it would be nice to show them off in this video. The first one is Five Survived by Holly Jackson which is a standalone thriller from the author of the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. In this one we follow a group of friends who take a trip in an RV, however they soon take a wrong turn, their tyres are slashed and they are stuck in the middle of nowhere and someone starts shooting at them. Then we have The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie which is a murder mystery novel in which we follow Detective Hercule Poirot as he tries to solve a locked room murder mystery case. And then lastly we have Anything You Can Imagine, Peter Jackson and the Making of Middle Earth by Ian Nathan. This is a non-fiction book all about Peter Jackson's rise to success and the struggles he faced whilst trying to bring the Lord of the Rings books to life on the big screen. Question number two is what's the best sequel you've read so far in 2023? And this is one that I have already mentioned because it is The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie. This is technically a standalone 
and murder mystery set in the Poirot detective murder mystery series however I am gonna count it as a sequel mainly because I haven't really read a lot of sequels this year and the ones that I've read haven't really been amazing and as I previously mentioned this was a five star read for me I absolutely loved it I have a reading vlog in which I read this one actually so I will leave that linked up above and down below if you want to check that out but as I mentioned this is a locked room murder mystery which just blew me away I can't say too much about this one because I really don't want to spoil it but in this book we are in a little village where everyone kind of knows each other's business and at the start of this book we find out that a woman has recently passed away and it turns out that she may have killed her husband now this woman sends a letter to Roger Ackroyd who is a wealthy businessman and who was also her lover letting him know the identity of a blackmailer that forced her to kill her husband now Roger Ackroyd does receive this letter he is in the company of his doctor when he does so however he refuses to open it in front of the doctor and mentions that he will be opening it later on in the night however the doctor soon gets a phone call letting him know that Roger Ackroyd has been murdered and so he races over to the house to find everything to be pretty calm the doctor thought that Roger Ackroyd's butler was the one that phoned him however when he gets to the house as I mentioned everything is quite calm no one seems to be alarmed considering that an apparent murder has occurred and so the doctor rings the bell gets the attention of the butler who is extremely confused he has no idea what's going on he is adamant that he never phoned the doctor but they decide to check on Roger Ackroyd just in case and of course he has been murdered from this point forward Hercule Poirot enters the scene and starts to use his little grey cells to figure out what's going on and figure out who did kill Roger Ackroyd and possibly his lover and her former husband as well so there's a lot of drama in this book it is quite a complex mystery but as I mentioned you get sucked in and the reveal at the end was just mind-blowing to me I did figure it out just before the big reveal and I feel like I should have picked up on it sooner but this book just had such an effect on me I absolutely love it I understand why this book catapulted Agatha Christie into the limelight and I would highly recommend this one to anyone who wants to read a very good short complex murder mystery book Question number three is what's a new release that you haven't read yet? So that one for me is Witch King by Martha Wells. This was in a recent Illumicrate box and ever since I've received it I have been desperate to read it. Now I can't tell you too much about the plot in particular for this book because I honestly can't quite remember what it's about but the main reason I want to read this book is because of the artwork on the end pages. Look at this you guys, isn't it just the most beautiful thing? We of course have a sea creature here which is really intriguing to me and then on the back we do have some more character art which again is just stunning and yeah it desperately makes me want to read it. I will just read you the synopsis for this one because as I mentioned I'm not quite sure how to describe it myself. It says after being murdered his consciousness dormant and unaware of the passing of time while confined in an elaborate water trap Kai wakes to find a lesser mage attempting to harness Kai's magic to his own advantage. That was never going to go well but why was Kai imprisoned in the first place? What has changed in the world since his assassination and why does the rising world coalition appear to be growing an in influence. Kai will need to pull his allies close and draw on all his pain magic if he is to answer even the least of these questions. He's not going to like the answers. Now that definitely doesn't give too much away but as I mentioned the artwork has me so intrigued. This book has had a few mixed reviews though so I'm a little bit more apprehensive now diving in but it's one that I've been wanting to get to ever since it arrived and I'm hopefully going to be reading it this month because it is on my July TBR so definitely keep your eyes peeled for a reading vlog featuring this book and also for for my monthly wrap up at the end of the month as well. Question number four is what's your most anticipated book for the second half of the year? And you guys might be able to guess what this is from my answer to the first question because that one is Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros which is of course the sequel to Fourth Wing. Now Rebecca Yaros is a wizard you guys. The first book came out earlier on this year and the second book is coming out this November. I don't know how she does it but I'm so happy that she does. I've already pre-ordered the Waterstones exclusive edition which is gorgeous and I just cannot wait to see what happens to our characters because the ending of Fourth Wing was so intense so many different things went on and of course there was a bit of a cliffhanger so I am just desperate to dive back into this world to follow these characters and see what they get up to how they manage to tackle everything and how they deal with some of the revelations that we got in the ending of the last book because wow 
that was intense but yeah I do have this pre-ordered I am actually going to be making a video soon of my most anticipated releases for the second half of the year I did it last year you guys loved it so I am going to be sitting down to film it again this year so I am only going to be mentioning Iron Flame for this question as of now but by the end of July start of August you should have an anticipated releases video for the second half of the year live on my channel we've definitely got a sadder note now because the next question is what's been your biggest disappointment and that one is the appeal by Janice Hallett I gave this book two stars but I could honestly bring it down even further to a one star this book was just not for me you guys it was so so boring I really didn't care about any of the characters I feel like there were so many characters and none of them had a distinct personality and so I genuinely didn't care about what was going on in this book because I didn't care about the characters which is awful to say but this was such an anticipated release for me I bought it as soon as it came out because I was at Waterstones and a Waterstones bookseller actually recommended this one to me because they saw that I had some Agatha Christie books in my basket and as I mentioned this one had just come out it had a lot of hype and they were really excited about it which is why I decided to pick it up another aspect of this book which made me want to pick it up is the mixed media aspect so this is told through a lot of different formats we have some text messages we have some emails between our characters there as well we have a few different transcripts and also some post-it notes as you can see there now I've never read a mixed media murder mystery book and so as I mentioned this one was a really anticipated release for me and I thought I was going to love it however it was just so boring it was way too long way 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 too long I don't think anything actually happened until you were about 200 pages in and by that point I was just not bothered and I really didn't want to carry on reading had I not been filming a dedicated reading vlog for this book I would have dnf'd it I would not have put myself through the last two 300 pages because it was such a slog it put me in a six week reading slump which is awful and I will be very happy to see this book leave my collection essentially in this one we follow a lot of different characters as I mentioned however one of these characters is murdered and two law students get put on the case to try and figure out who the murderer is. Now they do this by looking at all of the email transcripts between the different characters because they all kind of connect to each other, they all work in the same places, they all live in the same village and they are all part of an amateur dramatics group. And so the key to finding the killer is somewhere in all of this correspondence and as I mentioned our law students are tasked with going through all of the transcripts and trying to figure out who could be behind this crime and then it just says here throughout the amateur dramatic society's disastrous staging of all my sons and the shady charity appeal for a little girl's medical treatment the murderer hid in plain sight will charlotte and femi solve the case will you now the premise sounds amazing and i do understand why people would love this book however for me there was just nothing that drew me in as i mentioned nothing really happens until about 200 pages in i feel like we should have gotten a lot more communication between our two law students because you get about 150 to 200 pages of emails and correspondence between our different characters and then you get one page of notes by the law students and so I just feel like there was a bit of a disconnect between the characters involved, the law students involved and us as a reader. I feel like because of that the kind of reveal at the end was a bit lacklustre and I just felt like it wasn't impactful enough really because you didn't see them working it out as they went along. There was a lot of kind of pauses in between and again I just felt that disconnect and it really didn't do it for me unfortunately. Another aspect of this was the emails. There were so 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 many emails that is essentially the biggest form of communication between our characters throughout this book and this is set in 2018. You cannot tell me that people still email each other like this in 2018. I only email people for business purposes and I can phone or text or WhatsApp or Snapchat message them if I want to talk to them outside of work. So that is another element that threw me off. I just thought it was really really strange and as a whole as you can tell this novel just didn't do it for me. I do have Janice Hallett's other book which is The Twyford Code so I may attempt to read that one soon. I have heard a lot more good things about that one than I have the appeal so let me know your thoughts down below should I continue on with Janice Hallett's books are they gonna get better because yeah this one was such a drag for me it was a massive disappointment and I am really sad that I didn't enjoy this one as much as I thought I would the next question is what's been your biggest surprise and the book I've chosen for this one is Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson this is another one that I recently picked up I honestly picked it up on a whim I really didn't feel like this book was gonna 
gonna be for me just because it's a kind of contemporary fantasy featuring witches in the modern world and even though I love my witches I am more of a fantasy girl and so a contemporary setting just really isn't for me. However I needed a new audiobook to listen to. I saw this one on Scribd. The sequel is coming out later on this year and so I decided you know what I'm gonna listen to it see whether I enjoy it or not before I pre-order the sequel and I am so glad I did you guys because this book was amazing. I honestly don't really know the best way to describe this book to you guys because as I mentioned from what I heard I wasn't really sure that this book was gonna be for me but wow was I blown away by the plot, the characters, the magic, the representation and just everything in general basically. So the best way I can sum it up is that we have a group of witches who have been childhood friends but over the years they've kind of drifted off and gone down different paths. Some of the witches are in HMRC which I guess is kind of like an MI5 situation for witches where they are tasked with ensuring that witches and magical beings behave themselves and adhere to society's rules and expectations. One of the friends is very high up in HMRC, we have another friend that has left HMRC, we then have our third friend who has set up their own coven because HMRC seemed to be a little too set in the old ways for them and they wanted a coven that was more inclusive towards different types of witches and I believe that our fourth main character is in HMRC and her daughter is now showing signs of becoming a witch and so we see how she is trying to deal with that. Now these four friends all come together again because a prophecy emerges which shows a child that is going to be the destruction of the world. They are going to team up with some demons and yeah essentially overthrow humanity and cause chaos and of course our four main friends are caught in the middle of this and they have to make some morally difficult decisions that will affect the outcome of this prophecy. I feel like that's all I'm gonna say. Again I don't really know if I summed that up well. I'm sorry if I didn't but the representation in this is phenomenal. Juno Dawson is a trans author herself and it was really refreshing to see trans issued tackled in a book like this and it not really being too much of a big thing for our characters except for a few of them who are TERFs essentially. Now I haven't mentioned this publicly on my channel because it's not really my place to do so however I will just mention quickly that one of my cousins is actually transitioning and so I am personally becoming more and more aware of the issues that trans people do face and as I mentioned Juno Dawson herself is trans the representation in this is phenomenal because I can imagine that she has faced this prejudice whilst transitioning and after transitioning as well which is just awful I'm of the mindset that this is your life you be who you want to be I don't see why people are so affected by other people's choices on how to live their lives and I feel like that was essentially the message of this book as well it was so beautifully written I got a bit teary towards the end because of something that happens to one of our characters Characters, which was just again beautifully done and so so moving and yeah I would highly recommend this one to you guys even if you think that you might not like it I would give the audiobook a go because the narrator is phenomenal and when you pair that with the writing it's just an all-round amazing book so this was definitely a surprise for me I am hoping to get my hands on the fairy loot edition of the second book and I will be reading that one as soon as it comes out because again this ended on a massive cliffhanger and I don't know how to feel about it so I need the second book as soon as possible and I will definitely let you guys know my thoughts on it once I do manage to read it. Next up is who is your favourite new author that can be a debut or new to you? Now I do have a few because I have read from some amazing authors this year. The first of those being Rebecca Yeras, we also have Juno Dawson, Morgan Rhodes and Jen Lyons to name a few. I have been really enjoying finding new authors this year and I really hope to continue on with that throughout the second half of the year as well. It's always nice to read from familiar authors but I feel like branching out and reading books from different authors gives you a whole new perspective on certain stories and I've just had an amazing time reading from all of these fantastic authors and these authors have had such an impact on me that I will be picking up some more of their books when I can. The next question is who is your newest fictional crush and I know I'm using the same book again but how could I not choose Zayden from Fourth Wing? I'm not going to talk too much about him because again I just don't want to spoil anything for this book however he is fantastic. He is essentially a mix of Reese Sand and Asriel from the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Maas at least in my opinion anyway and yeah he's just such an amazing complex character that I just fell in love with. You can see from the smile on my face 
how much I just love him as a character and how much I do love his relationship with our other main character who I'm not gonna mention because I don't want to spoil anything. Question number nine is who's your newest favorite character and whilst I could have chosen Violet from Fourth Wing I have chosen Kirin from the A Chorus of Dragons series by Jen Lyons. I started reading this one about a year ago now and I just could not get into it for some reason so I did put it down. Recently though I just had the urge to read it again and so I listened to the audiobook and fell in love. Kirin as a main character is just so funny. He is so sarcastic and has a really unique sense of humour that comes across so well. I was laughing at some of the stuff he said. I was really enjoying his interactions with different characters as well and he's definitely not your typical sort of main character. Like he has gone through a lot. He doesn't really want to be all high and mighty. He just wants to kind of be left in peace. However he gets sucked into a world of prophecies, kings, demons and war and yeah <laughs> He is just like, whoa, what is going on? I don't know how to deal with this. And yeah, it's just absolutely brilliant. This is going to be a very difficult book to sum up because it's the first book in a five book series in an adult high fantasy world. Do you know what guys? I've just decided I'm gonna redo the synopsis because <laughs> I'm awful at describing books anyway. And this is just too complicated for me. It says, as a bard's apprentice, Kidden grew up with tales of legendary deeds. He also steals, desperate to buy a way out of Kaur's slums. Then he reads the the wrong house, he's marked by a demon, and his life will never be the same again. Kinnan's plight brings him to the attention of royalty, who claim him as the lost son of their immoral prince. But far from living the dream, Kinnan's at the mercy of his new family's ruthless ambitions. However, escaping his jeweled cage just makes matters worse. Kinnan is horrified to learn he's at the centre of an ancient prophecy, and every side, from gods and demons to dragons and mages, want him as their pawn. Those old stories lied about many things too, especially the myth that the hero always wins. Then again, Maybe Kirin isn't the hero, for he's not destined to save the Empire, he is destined to destroy it. Doesn't that sound so good you guys? I am extremely glad that I decided to pick this one up again. I will be continuing on with the series. I think I'm going to join Jade's Patreon actually because she is hosting a read along for this series and I think it would be nice to be able to chat to different people about their thoughts on these books whilst reading them. And I just need to know what happens next because I would actually be okay with this as a standalone book but we have four more books to tackle and I feel like it's only going to get more and more high stakes as we go on. So I definitely feel like I will be continuing continuing listen to the audiobooks for this series. The audiobook is phenomenal and it really does help me retain more information and feel a little bit more connected to the characters. So I cannot wait to carry on and see where this story goes because as I mentioned I have no idea where it's going to go from here. Question number 10 is what's a book that made you cry? Now I have previously mentioned that Her Majesty's Royal Coven did make me a little teary-eyed because of such an emotional and empowering moment but we do also have Fourth Wing where I again almost cried at the ending because of everything that went on and a certain character's demise which really did affect me and I really wish didn't happen but I feel like it is going to be important and integral to the story and so I can forgive Rebecca Yaros to a point but I will also never be okay again. So even though I don't typically cry whilst reading books these two got me in the feels and they really did tug at my heartstrings. Question number 11 is which book made you feel happy? For that one I'm going with The Outsiders by Michelle Paver, which is a Greek myth retelling. Now this is actually set before the time that we would consider as ancient Greece. I believe it's called the Bronze Age of Ancient Greece. I am just gonna get the author's note because Michelle Paver has done a lot of research into this time period. Yeah it says the story of Hylas and Pyrrha takes place three and a half thousand years ago in what we now call the Bronze Age. As you may have gathered it happens in the land we call ancient Greece. However the Greece of the Bronze Age was very different from the ancient Greece of marble temples and classical sculpture with which you may be familiar. The Bronze Age was long before that. It was even before the Greeks ranged their gods and goddesses into an orderly pantheon of Zeus, Hera, Hades and all the others. We don't know much about Bronze Age Greece as we do about what came afterwards because its people left so few written records. However we know something about the astonishing cultures which flourished at that time and which we called the Mycenaeans and the Minoans. Theirs is the world of gods and warriors. So in this book we follow our main character Hylas and at the start of this book him and his sister are attacked and they are separated. Now Hylas has no idea who attacked them or why and so he sets off on a quest to find out this information while
whilst also looking for his missing sister. He of course faces a lot of obstacles along the way, his quest takes him across the hostile mountains and the treacherous seas of ancient Greece, and he also meets some friends along the way including a young girl and a dolphin companion. Now I feel like what makes me happiest about this book is the fact that we get the dolphin's perspective. Michelle Paver is an author that I am familiar with, she is the author of the Chronicles of Ancient Darkness series, which if you guys don't know is one of my favourite series of all time. It's the series that got me into reading and in that series in particular we do get the perspective of a wolf. So I was definitely hoping for an animal perspective in here and we do get it and yeah it's just so well done and such an interesting thing to have in your book. So that is definitely one of the reasons that I love this book so much. The dolphin is just the cutest thing ever and yeah I love seeing what Hylos is doing through his eyes as well. It just gives the story such an interesting perspective and it's something that I did really appreciate and enjoy. Question number 12 is what's the most beautiful book that you either bought or received this year? Now I have two to show you guys because I'm extremely indecisive but the first one I have is Lies We Sing to the Sea by Sarah Underwood which is a Greek myth retelling. This is beautiful as you can see the cover is just gorgeous, the foiling is top notch and the depiction of the woman turning into the sea is just so so beautiful. Now we do also have a sprayed edge which is lovely and the front cover has a boat on there with some foiling as well. And the second book I'm going to mention is a fairy loot book. Now it did take me a while to decide which one I wanted to feature because you guys know Fairy Loot and Illumicrate books are just stunning and since I get two books every month from these subscription boxes I do have quite a few. However I have gone with The Adventures of Amina al Sadafi because look at this cover you guys isn't it just the most beautiful thing and we also have the most stunning sprayed edges as well. I absolutely love these. I love the contrast between the blue, the black and the red and this just makes me want to pick up the book immediately which which I'm very embarrassed to say that I haven't done yet. The naked hardcover is also just beautiful. We have gorgeous end pages which again just make me want to read it immediately. So all in all these two books are probably some of the most stunning ones that I own. I'm so happy to have them and even though I know you shouldn't judge a book by its cover I have very high hopes for these two because of how beautiful they are. Question number 13 is what has been your favourite book to movie adaptation? Now I wasn't going to feature this as a question because I didn't think that I'd actually seen a book to movie adaptation this year. However one that did come to mind is why didn't they Ask Evans which has been turned into a series for ITV. As you can imagine this is based off of the book Why Didn't They Ask Evans by Agatha Christie which is a murder mystery novel. It is one that I'm familiar with. I haven't read the book itself however I have watched another ITV adaptation for this book and thoroughly enjoyed it. Now this is one that I was desperate to watch because a certain actor called Will Poulter is in it who if you don't know plays Eustace in the Chronicles of Narnia The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. He is in With the Millers which is such an amazing film and he has most recently been cast as Adam Warlock in the new Guardians of the Galaxy film. I have loved him since he was in Narnia. I feel like that is the first time I ever saw him on screen. He's also been in a game actually called House of Ashes which is a kind of horror game that we play on Xbox and once again he is just phenomenal in that. So essentially he is an actor that I'm familiar with and that I do enjoy watching. And so when I saw that he was going to be playing our main character Bobby Jones in the new adaptation I was sold and Tom and I essentially sat down to watch it and binged the whole thing. All it says as the description of the show here is a dying man's enigmatic last words send Vicar's son Bobby Jones and his socialite friend Lady Frankie Derwent on a crime solving adventure. Essentially it's an amateur detective kind of story which I just love and the friendship dynamic slash love dynamic between our two main characters is just amazing. So if you would like something to watch I would highly recommend this one. It is such a good adaptation and it definitely definitely keeps close to the original source as well. And then the last question is what books do you need to read before the end of the year? And honestly the best way I can answer this is whatever is still on my TBR. I definitely have a lot of series that I need to get around to finishing such as the First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie which I have nearly finished now or at least the first part anyway we do have a lot more books to go in that universe. I have the Fallen Kingdom series by Morgan Rose that I also need to finish. I'm halfway through but I have slowed down in reading those books so I definitely need 
need to pick up the pace and tackle those ones again. I need to finish the Gods and Warriors series by Michelle Paver and the A Chorus of Dragons series by Jen Lyons. So that is just to name a few. I also have a lot of fairy loot and Illumicrate books that I would like to get to. I have a lot of Greek myth retellings as well. So honestly, I can't fully answer this question because my reading is just all over the place. I am picking up books that I am gravitating towards rather than having a set yearly TBR. So we're going from month to month. I have a lot of books that I would like to get to, but I'm not putting too much pressure on myself to read specific books. But there we have it, you guys. We have finally made it to the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed listening to my answers for all of these questions. I always have such a fun time filming this because it makes me sit down and reflect on my reading for the first half of the year, which I tend to forget to do a lot of the times. And so it's been nice to look back on all of the books that I've read and fit them into these different questions. If you have read any of the books I've mentioned in this video, please do leave me your spoiler free thoughts down below. I would love to chat to you guys about each and every single one of these because I have so many thoughts and it's so hard to kind of condense it all into a short little answer for you guys, but I have to do that otherwise the video would be way too long. If you are still watching at this point, I would like to let me know that you're still here. Please go ahead and leave me a calendar emoji down below. It's crazy to think that we are in the second half of the year now. And is it awful to say that I'm kind of counting down to Christmas already? My birthday's been and gone now, so I feel like the Christmas countdown is on, or possibly Halloween first, actually. But we have so many exciting things happening in the second half of the year. I'm so, so excited to see which books I managed to read and which videos I'm also gonna create for you guys. So definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. So if you are still here, but don't have anything in particular that you would like to say, please go ahead and leave me a calendar emoji down below. If you would like to support me further, you could click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me. But that is it from me today, guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. It truly does mean the world to me and I will see you soon in my next video. Goodbye.